it's not about the money, but I can't, um, I was just taken to eviction court um, that's looking at $2,000 within the next month and a half and another $400 a month. That order was entered on October 14th, 2021. Mr. Fort to pay child support in the amount of $98 per month. Um, Ms. Egley has gone as far as is going to sell his guinea pigs. Honor, she's been caught once before living off my child support when I was paying seven hundred. You know what? That's this. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Fort is asking for child support to be recalculated based on him having more overnights. It sounds like, Mr. Fort, that you're asking for child support to be recalculated based on you having four to five overnights per week. Is, is that what I'm hearing? Yes, sir. All right. So, I mean, I just did the math. So four overnights a week would put your overnights up to 208. Uh, right now it's 157. Um, let's do, uh, if you're asking for five overnights a week, then you're talking about 260 overnights annually. So you, are you asking for 208? Are you asking for 260? Are you asking for I'm something? Asking for, I'm, I'm asking for 260. Okay. Um, That's fine. This, okay. Uh, so Ms. Ugly, um, are you contesting Mr. Fort's request that child support get recalculated based on him having 260 overnights? Yes. Um, okay. There have been well. Days okay, of I just what, what time out? Time out. Sure. So since uh, since you're contesting it, we're going to go ahead and swear you in and take your testimony. Okay. So if you would please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You can lower your hand. All right. So you may continue. Okay. Um, since the beginning of this year and probably the year following before, I've let Patrick um, decide when Kaysen would be home. Um, it does really range on a th three to four a week. Um, I want to say it balances, and I don't agree with his calendar, but I don't have a way to prove on mine. Um, Patrick and I have no contact with each other, and I would like to work on contact. Um, I, we at least agree with each other when Kaysen should be here. Kaysen is with the other one. Um, and we've had a good balance going on. Uh, Patrick only pays $80 a month, which is not a substantial amount. I was paying $400 a month. Um, I also raised Kaysen from the time he was born until six years old. Um, I have let Patrick go ahead and help parent. He's been involved in school with a doctor. Um, that's been extremely helpful and it's been good for Kaysen and things have gotten better. Um, there were incidents of domestic violence and Kaysen was, uh, sorry, diagnosed with PTSD, as am I, which is why I keep my distance. Um, uh, over the last year I've been struggling with PTSD and it's been better for Kaysen not to be here with me all the time, the four days a week. Um, I'm sorry, what did you just say? It's been better for Kaysen not to always be here the four days a week. So it's okay, usually- and I, just, I had a question about that, the four days a week. So under the current parenting time order, Kaysen would ordinarily be with you about four days a week. Is that right? Four to five. Yeah, he comes home okay. once during the week and then he's home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. And I don't mind- mixing that up and having, you know, Friday, Saturday, going home Sunday and having two days. But I'd like to work it out so there isn't a, I would like to do 50-50. Um, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm actually comfortable co-parenting with you. And I need to be able to do this without fearing for my safety or our safety or blowing up, um, and that's what I'm asking for. Well, you understand that uh, this is not a hearing to change parenting time. I understand that. And parenting time itself is, I mean, I would like to say we're pretty happy with the schedule. So, um, so do I hear you correctly that over the past, you know, 
year, year and a half. I mean, I thought I heard you say that over that time because of, you know, your, your, your struggles with PTSD, that you were not having case in the four to five days each week, that it was a lesser amount? It's four to, uh, it's not, it has not been five days. Okay. Um, so four, um, rarely three during soccer. He had um, Saturday morning games. So he stayed there Friday night. Um, it has ranged, but because of, I can't, when I knew that this was going to come down to a fight, who has case and more, who, you know, it shouldn't be about money at this point. Uh, Kaysen's never gone hungry. Kaysen's never had something he didn't need. No, he's not, you know, in an overabundance of toys and gifts. He's got everything he needs, but he doesn't like not having his Burger King. He doesn't like not having sugary snacks. And he has called his dad, like, can you drop off Burger King? Can you drop off whatever? We're not in any situation where we're lacking in food, but we don't have an overabundance of, like, here's five different dinners and here's you know, and all of these, it's $80 a month. And $80 a month is worth having an open communication with each other than it is to try and restrict this again. It's not about the money, but I can't, um, I was just taken to eviction court um, that's looking at $2,000 within the next month and a half and another $400 a month. I'm not working at this time. Um, so you do I understand that you you disagree with the calendar? Do you think the calendar is incorrect? I do. I do. Okay, that's not, I just all I wanted to know. Yes. Okay. My phone died within the week before, so I can't go back and look at scheduled days. Okay. Um, so do I mean do do you think that and I I thought I heard you say that. Well, how, would you say that you've generally been averaging three days a week? I think if I'm calculating it right, it's going to be almost half. So 50-50. Um, four days a week, up to three times a month, um, if not less. So like four hmm. to three days. Okay. And especially during summer, um, I'm asking... Uh, that we come back to this, and once we can figure this out, um, but I'm, with everything else going on this week, and not having a lawyer, um, it's just, it's not sensible right now to try and argue a point where what's in the best interest of case and what's in the best interest, and I'm grateful that Pat has been there to help, um, to watch case and to have case in there over the last year through this. Um, and so, Miss Ugly, um, I, I mean, it sounds like you, you feel like you're in a better spot now. Is that yes. time to understand? And so, um, I mean, based on how you're feeling, do you think you're, you're going to want to go back to, you know, what, what the court order has with, you know, you getting generally, it looks like four days a week? Yes. I see. And uh, I heard that, did you hear the testimony of Mr. Fort? Uh, he testified that you only started asking for um, for more parenting time after he filed his motion. Do you agree with that? That's because it became a fight. Um, Kaysen has spent more of the nights where he was supposed to be here at a friend's house. So when I'm texting at six o'clock at night, you know, when are you coming home? Are you coming home? No, I want to go to a friend's. The fact that we're using that against each other is what upsets me. We could you, allow could you explain that a little bit more? I'm not sure I understand that. Um, every time where Kaysen is supposed to have been home Friday night, um, there is a party going on and Kaysen wants to spend the night at a friend's house. Mm. That's fine, but Patrick's using it against me that he's not with me. No, he's not because we're letting him have a social life and then go out with friends. Um, so yeah, this has been more of a fight. And unfortunately, when Kaysen was born... Um, the reasoning for CPS becoming involved in the first place, it's not the last circumstance, but it was because of domestic violence and they feared for um, our safety. And Patrick has changed a lot in the last couple of years. We don't talk much, um, but the aggressive outbursty behavior has been better. 
Kaysen came back from Patrick's pretty devastated after he was removed from my care for nine months. Um, showed signs of having PTSD come back uh, pretty severe. His attitude, his demeanor, um, you know, he went from being calm and happy to becoming violent, angry, upset. Um, Miss Ugly, these are, I mean, I'm, I know. I, these are all relevant things for parenting time. Um, this, but that, yeah. that is why I put the motion or for the custody. And things have been gradually, like Kaysen's doing really well, school is doing really well. Yeah, but it's, I again, again I, all I can focus on right now is, is the is child this, support. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to, let's take another look at that calendar. Okay. okay. So, um, well, uh, can, uh, can you see, can you see the calendar? And yes. I'll, all right. So I'm just, you know, I'm looking at, just looking at Fridays. Looks like April 21st is a marked down as a Friday with Mr. Fort. More than likely because of soccer. Okay. Um, and it, it looks like, you know, March 10th, March 17th, March, so March 24th is spring break with you, the March 31st with him. I mean, are you saying that some of these Friday nights that Kaysen's actually not with either one of you, that he's he's spending the night at a friend's house? At least two to maybe four days a month. So every <laughs> Friday, every Saturday. Are you um, are you are you seeing anywhere in this calendar where where that's marked down? Um it just says D and M, doesn't it? Correct. So 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 the fact that he's spending a night with neither one of you it's not indicated in this calendar is it no do you do you think this calendar is accurate miss ugly um going back a year i wish i could say I, I knew better um but by memory it's always been friday saturday sunday uh the only time i think that that wasn't the case was during uh soccer but he came home even during uh, basketball he had two days or one uh game a week he would come home usually two or three times that month during soccer uh basketball games um and that puts us back a couple months ago so i'm just i'm struggling to see how even like three to four days it's got to be more so half and half and so even here see. in october of 2022 Looking at the week of October 16 through 22, I've got one, two, three, four Ds there. Do you see that? Yep. And Kaysen doesn't not come home on Friday. He's always here on Friday. There's probably two days out of that time period that I can pick out where he didn't come home. And that's because there isn't usually communication between us, so I'll let it go. And then it's what time do you want me to drop him off? And that happens, you know, two times a week, and then he's here with me from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then he goes home on Monday. Okay. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to say just about the child support uh, situation? Just that I would like to settle this out of court, but what can be done or what needs to be done, I guess. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fort. Any questions for Ms. Ugly? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Um... Ms. Egley, you, you, you sat here and said that his school is going okay. How many times, Ms. Egley, have you been to an IEP? Okay. Uh, hey, guys, this is not about parenting time. That's not relevant. One, I mean, if, if you want to have a custody hearing or a parenting time hearing, please file the appropriate motion. A hearing on that will be scheduled. We're only here today on child support. Okay, Ms. Egley, why, why is it now that I file my motion? You're the you're you're contacting me on Friday and asking me when Kaysen is coming home. Before this motion has ever been filed, Ms. Egley. Okay, not, that's a, just let her answer that question. Go ahead, Ms. Egley. Uh, because I let you dictate a lot of the time. Uh, Kaysen has been home every Friday, except for before in soccer. Um, I've been really allowing, knowing that it hasn't been a fight between us. 
he is going to a friend's house Friday night. If I have to not let Casey go to a friend's house, but I'm texting you now because we're at the time and period where we're able to text and talk. Um, I haven't been to IEPs because I couldn't be in the same room with you. I don't, I don't I, want yeah, hey, Miss Ugly, I don't want to hear and about I know. IEP. I, I, and I, have, I don't text That's you. Like, that we're, we're, you're getting non-responsive. Mr. Fort, any more questions? Um, why, Miss Egley, all the text messages that I have, it's me asking you when you are going to take Kaysen. There's only a handful of times you have messaged me and asked me if you can have Kaysen. I don't need to ask you if I can have Kaysen for something that we've already set. Um, it's really random during the week how, what days he's been here. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you text me and say, what time do you want him? What time? And you're the one dropping him off. Any I think Kaysen being involved with you has been really good. And I don't want to go back on anything that we've kind of built back together as it pertains to Kaysen. And you know this is a good home. Okay, so we're it's getting non-responsive. The question was, how come there's no text messages on my Because phone? he's dropping them off. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Fort. Um, why, you, if everything's going good in your home and you can support him in your home, why am I supplying the pull-ups for him in your home why have you asked me multiple times to make sure he is fed before he comes to your house? Or you've told, told me multiple times through text messaging that you don't have food for him at his house. And it's I've not that there isn't food, and we do have pull-ups here. Casey doesn't like to wear them. Um, they're a different brand. As for food, I don't have a lot of the snacks. And last night or yesterday, um, I didn't know he was going to be here for two days. It was early in the afternoon. I don't have anything right now. Tomorrow we get food. Um, it's $500 with the price of groceries going up. Everything has become a lot more expensive. Um, we have, we're just going month to month and like that last week, a little bit struggle. I mean, it's $7 for a thing of pop. It's $5 for eggs. It's you know, so I went home last night and I got bread, hot dogs, what we needed. But it hasn't been easy. And you know that not working hasn't been easy. But I have done this all of my, his life, paying for him, raising him. You haven't been there. You've been there for the last three years and Kason has been taken care of. Okay, so we're getting, we're getting, we're getting non-responsive here. Okay. So. I appreciate everything okay. that you've done financially. You know that. Ms. Egley, I, Your Honor, I, I, I just, I don't think it's right that. Okay, just one I, second. Do you have any more questions for Ms. Egley? No, not at this time, sir. Ms. Egley, did any of Mr. Fort's questions to you prompt some additional response that you wanted to make? Um, other than my overall avoidance of conversation with him is due to um, the, the history of assault and abuse and the explosive behavior. Um, I, when I moved here, I wouldn't tell him where I lived. And a lot of that's kind of settled down, but I don't make in over, I'm not reaching out because that is still, you know, I don't want to argue about when Case is going to be at a friend's house or home or anything else. And it's been good, but I don't have, I, I'm, I, it's too difficult to try and balance this and not knowing if things are going to get to that point again where I have to fear for our safety. So that's why there's a lack of communication. Thank you, Mr. Fort. 
Your Honor, the lack of communication is, is, is Miss Egley sleeps all day. Um, there has been a lot of things when my son comes home to me, I have picked him up from his mom's house before school and he's in tears. And I asked him why he's in tears. He's told me that mom's being me. Um, Ms. Egley has gone as far as is going to sell his guinea pigs. Okay, so I get Mr. Fort, you had an opportunity to make your case. I allowed you to testify. You finished your testimony. Now you can conclude if you want to summarize things you've already said, but it's not an, this is not an opportunity just to keep going into all new things. You had your chance. You rested your case. What are you asking for? What are you asking for from the court based on what you've already said? I, 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 I'm just asking the courts to do the right thing. And that's why I'm here. I'm here because I believe that it's not right for me to have to support my child in both homes. I, I just don't think it's right, Your Honor. She's been caught once before living off my child support when I was paying seven hundred. You know what? That's this. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. So again, it's it's all right there. We we've, we've been through court and everything about all this. All right. So, Mister Mister Court, Mr. Court I, look. I think I think I've heard everything that I need to hear. Thank you. All right. Uh, this has been a hearing on uh, defendant's motion regarding support. Uh, the parties are the parents of one minor child. The most recent order regarding parenting time in that case is a third order modifying order for custody, support, and parenting time. And that order was entered on January 12th, 2021. Uh, that order was a stipulation between the parties. And that order provided for essentially a schedule where plaintiff mother would get four overnights each week and defendant father would get three overnights each week. Um, and the, I mean, I understand there's a disagreement between the parties as to what happened after that, but it sounds like the parties do agree that the parenting time order that is in place provided for mom to get four each week and for dad to get three. Now, um, there was uh, the most recent child support order that was entered in this case is a fourth order modifying order for custody, support, and parenting time. That order was entered on October 14th, 2021. And uh, that order um, required uh, Mr. Fort to pay child support in the amount of $98 per month. And no, uh, nobody filed an objection to that order. And that order has remained in effect since that time. The child support in this case and in that order was based on Mr. Fort getting 157 overnights each year with the party's child. So that basically corresponds to the parenting time order. Um, if dad was supposed to get three overnights each week, 52 times three equals 156. So that basically was the amount of overnights that child support is currently based on. As far as the incomes are concerned, the current child support amount is based on Ms. Egley uh, earning gross income of $1,810 a month. Um, she may have been imputed at that amount. Uh, this court is unclear. Mr. Fort, uh, for purposes of child support, his income was actually set at a lower amount. His income for purposes of child support was based on him earning monthly gross income of $1,672 a month. Um, Mr. Fort is asking for a modification of child support uh, based on a change of circumstances. Uh, child support can be modified 
based on a change of circumstances. Um, in this case, uh, Mr. Fort um, testified that for the last 20 months that he has had the party's child in his care um, more than the amount of overnights used to calculate child support. He testified that he has the party's child over the last 20 months in his care on average four to five nights each week. He testified that uh, over that time, he has provided plaintiff with pull-ups. He testified that plaintiff does not work. He testified that he pays for uh, the party's child's uh, sporting expenses. He testified that plaintiff asks him for food. Uh, and he uh, drew the court's attention to a calendar um, which uh, he testified uh, was based on his uh, personal record, uh, based on his observations of when he has the party's child for parenting time, and that based on that calendar, that it shows that he has uh, the child in his care on average four to five nights each week. Um, he testified that there was a change that occurred after he filed his motion he filed this motion uh, this year on May 2nd. He testified that since that time that plaintiff has taken the party's child more uh, than she did previously. Uh, he testified that from the time he filed this motion until uh, school let out, that plaintiff began to receive approximately three overnights each week with the child. Uh, he testified that since summer vacation has begun, that um, the parties have basically split parenting time 50-50. Uh, he testified that he lets the party's child choose when he wants to go to uh, plaintiff for parenting time. Um, Mr. Ford is asking for child support to be recalculated uh, based on uh, his testimony and his claim regarding the amount of time that he has had the party's child in his care on average over the past 20 months. Uh, and he's uh, asking on that basis that child support be recalculated um, with uh, he, he, uh, him receiving credit uh, for overnights um, consisting of approximately 260 overnights annually. Uh, even though that would be contrary to the uh, current parenting time order in this case. The 2021 Michigan Child Support Formula Manual does permit a deviation under um, Section 1.04E, uh, uh, subsection 15. The formula permits a deviation if a parent provides a substantial amount of a child's daytime care and directly contributes toward a significantly greater share of the child's costs than those reflected by the overnights used to calculate the offset for parental time. Uh, the court heard the testimony of Ms. Egley. Uh, plaintiff mother testified that um, she believes the calendar is wrong. Um, she testified that um, uh, the party's child uh, previously had not, in fact, been with her the, uh, you know, four days each week, which is indicated in the order. But her testimony indicated that um, on average, based on her recollection, she's had the party's child in her care since the prior order on average about three days a week. Uh, at other points, she testified that it might have been 50-50. Uh, but she was very clear in her testimony that she thinks that the calendar is wrong and she disagrees with Mr. Fort's recollection of how the overnights have worked out. Uh, she testified that um, previously, she also let the party's child decide which parent he goes to for parenting time. Um, and she also testified that on many Fridays that um, the child is spending the night at a friend's house, which, I mean, obviously means that he's not with either of the parents, um, which means that that 
would not be accurately reflected in the calendar that was offered by Mr. Ford. Looking at Mr. Ford's calendar, all the Fridays either had the child being with father or the child being with mother. None of the Fridays had the child being with a third party caregiver uh, in the event that Kaysen was spending the night elsewhere. Um, on cross-examination, um, Mr. Fort asked Ms. Egley why all of his text messages um, are, are kind of one way where he's, you know, asking Ms. Egley, um, you know, are you going to take the child? And Ms. Egley testified to the effect, I don't need to ask you for the child, it's already ordered. I mean, it's pretty clear in this case that the parties have not necessarily been following the court order regarding parenting time. It's clear that it seems like both of these parties have issues with the current parenting time order. It's not clear to the court if either parent has filed a motion to modify parenting time. Seems like maybe that would be a good idea. Miss Egley testified, you know, she was asked by the court, do you intend in the future moving forward to follow the court order regarding parenting time? And she testified yes. And so it seems that, I mean, for the court to find that a deviation is permitted in this case, the court would have to find that there's been a, there's a preponderance of evidence that sides with Mr. Fort's version of what's been happening and not with Ms. Egley's. And this court doesn't find that there's a preponderance of evidence either way because it's basically a he said, she said. So because of that, that's a problem. And then moving forward, even if the court did agree that Mr. Fort was telling the truth and Miss Egley was lying, if moving forward, Miss Egley intends to follow the court order, then changing child support now would be inappropriate um, because it wouldn't reflect what's gonna happen under the court order. So because all of this is speculative, um, the court finds that it cannot award the relief requested um, that parenting time as ordered um, is what child support should be based on because that's the one sure thing the court can rely upon. If that order is changed and if the overnights change in the parenting time order, then this court would feel a lot more sure about modifying child support. And the court understands the testimony that Mr. Ford has purchased pull-ups, that he has paid for uh, sporting expenses, but the child support formula requires that it be a significantly greater share of the child's costs. Um, a substantial amount of the child's day daytime care the, there's no firm numbers in front of the court today. The court doesn't know how much was spent on the sporting expenses. The court doesn't know how much was spent on the pull-ups. There's no receipts. There's no itemization. Ms. Egley testified that she's buying pull-ups too. Uh, Mr. Ford testified that Ms. Egley asks for food, but there was no testimony that he's actually giving her the food. So there's, there's not, the evidence in this case is not strong enough to support the claim that Mr. Fort is providing a substantial amount of the child's daytime care and directly contributing toward a significantly greater share of the child's cost than that reflected in the current overnight. So for all of these reasons, uh, the court has to deny Mr. Fort's motion. Excuse me just a moment. So, sir, you're telling the court that you're doing all this child needs for support 